these upfront payments will be fully reimbursed by the DOE once the dedicated account is depleted. Therefore, consider the dedicated account as essentially a mechanism to defer but not replace the loan amounts. To make this easy to follow and to accurately portray the true use of cash in our operations, we will report the total amount of expenditures eligible for reimbursement from the DOE at the end of the quarter. And this is a combination of the lag in reimbursement, as I discussed earlier, and the deferred draws related to the dedicated account. As I mentioned earlier, this amount is $12 million at the end of Q2. Next, I'd like to offer some thoughts on guidance. Since we remain focused on the long-term objective of delivering the Model S, we'll provide limited guidance on our short-term financial results. Specifically, we'll provide annual financial guidance on revenues only. Accordingly, for this year, we project total revenues of $110 to $115 million. We expect roadster sales to show some growth, but small fluctuations are likely due to seasonality during the winter months. Just to set expectations for next quarter, in Q3 of last year, we experienced the peak of roadster deliveries to clear the order backlog that we had acquired over the prior two years. So we do not believe next quarter's year-over-year -year revenue comparison will be meaningful either. We expect powertrain activities to grow over the next few quarters, and this will come from both powertrain component sales as well as development services to Daimler and Toyota. And as we have mentioned, we expect both R&D and capital expenditures to increase over time but with some lumpiness related to the development of the Model S. Finally, since we are not actively focusing on getting Model S reservations at this time, we do not regard the number of Model S reservations we receive in any given quarter to be an indicator of our performance, at least for the next year or so. We are therefore not planning to provide guidance on the number of reservations we receive in any given quarter. I'd like to conclude by letting you know how excited we are about our long-term opportunities. We are confident in our long-term operating model and look forward to continuing to build on our strong market position. This ends our prepared remarks. Operator, can you please open the call for questions? Certainly, ladies and gentlemen, if you have a question at this time, please press star, then one on your touchtone telephone. If your question has been answered and you'd like to remove yourself from the queue, please press the pound key. Our first question comes from Rod Latch from Deutsche Bank. Your question, please. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah, there are. Go ahead. Um, a couple questions. Um, first of all, just on the, um, the CapEx and R&D, can you just give us a, a feel for how that's going to flow over the next few quarters? Um, and I'm assuming that the, uh, the funds for Fremont that th those actually get released on October 1st. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, when we complete the acquisition of uh, the Fremont side, uh, we will pay the balance of the $42 million acquisition price as well as uh, some additional equipment that we are purchasing from NUMI, as Elon indicated, at very good prices. Yeah, it's, it's basically, we, we, I think we put $3 million down on the NUMI. That's correct. So, so there's like $39 million, uh, to be paid to, to NUMI oh, uh, to, to acquire the facility. Um, it's, it's looking uh, probable that a significant portion of that will actually be covered by the DOE loan uh, because um, you know, NUMI is, is a car, or was until recently a car factory, so we're able to um, uh, offset uh, a significant portion of the purchase price uh, by the fact that we will not need to make um, facility upgrades that would have been required at uh, a different location that was not a car factory. Okay. So, yeah. so that, that's helpful, I think, on the in the new me um, purchase price. The, the on the capex question, um, we were we're trying to avoid giving pre, you know precise numbers for for capex expenditures because it is you know, with, with Given the, the rate of change of things to Tesla, it's difficult to um, predict ex expenditures to within a month or two, which is kind of what you need in order to have quarterly precision. Um, and so we, we could ultimately, um, you know, exceed or 
or it would be you know, above or below a projection by some meaningful number simply because an expenditure got pushed from one month to the next. Um, but uh, you know, it's, it's fair to say that uh, we, we've got roughly you know, uh, about $400 million to spend going forward over the next 10 quarters um, you know, uh, out of a $500 million program. So, uh, so we figure it's going to be sort of an average lease of $40 million a quarter. Which is a combination of uh, expenses and capex. Yeah, um, but it's, it's going to be it's going to be a little lumpy. So it's not it's, right. You know, it's hard to say one quarter from the next. You, it could be one quarter is a, a twenty million dollar quarter, and the next is a sixty million dollar quarter, and that and that just as a function of when payments become due. Okay, and can you give us um, just another uh, question on the uh, on the sales of Roadsters? Um, you know, how has the the trajectory of the international sales been looking, and how successful has the uh, the lease program been at this point? Um, the, the, uh, European sales have been sort of um, have, have been sort of moderate. They've, they've continued at a steady pace. We haven't seen really much much movement there. We have seen some improvement in on, on the U.S. side, and of course, we've just begun delivering a few units in Asia, um, and we think there could be you know a, a fair bit of demand uh, in Asia. Um, but, but we're not really trying to push uh, too hard on on roast activity. But you know, if if, if we end up selling 500 roasts a year, or 600 roasts a year, or 650 roasts a year, it's not as you know, it's not it's not a a huge impact on our on our uh, on our numbers. Um, the real value of the roaster is serving as that advanced scouting troop and that that vanguard to um, lay the groundwork for the modelers to follow. Um, but I think it's certainly. I feel very confident in being able to to achieve the you know five to five to six hundred units a year of approach to sales um, without really trying too hard in that front. And the leasing program? Oh, sorry. Yeah, good, good question. The leasing. We're about a twenty percent mix on the leasing. Okay. Um, so we, we actually thought we might be higher in the leasing, but um, it's, it's sort of twenty percent. We, we might. We might. That. that yeah, that, might, that might increase. Oh, you know, part of it also is we only have leasing in the U.S. Mm -hmm. so, we don't, so we don't have leasing in Canada. We don't have leasing in in Europe or, or Asia. So uh, it's the twenty percent. It's deep pocket twenty percent of our total mix. No, it's twenty percent of our U.S. Oh, twenty percent uh, of our U.S. mix. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it is kind of low. Huh. Okay. Um, just my last question is just: Can you elaborate a little bit on the the relationship with Toyota? What what exactly does this mean financially? Just the development contract, and what kind of volume would you be anticipating in the out years for for this vehicle? Um, we're not making any predictions on that front. Um, you know, so far things have uh, have gone gone very well, and and uh, we've consistently exceeded uh, Daimler's uh, Daimler's expectations. Um, but it's it's always difficult to predict where these things will go in the future. It's a function of of, of a lot of um, uh, you know a lot of things that, that aren't necessarily in our control. Um, you know, but it's, it's certainly fair to say that discussions are underway and. Um, you know, it's cautiously optimistic that there will be uh, continuing business there. Okay, so, so you're not prepared to disclose anything on, you know, just the development project or what kind of revenue from Toyota there we should be expecting at this point? Premature uh, for, for, for either Daimler or Toyota to to uh, um, start making predictions. Um, you know, things bode well for the future, uh, but I don't think we we have enough um, certainty to, to to be making predictions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Rob. Thank you. Our next question comes from the line of. Himanshu Patel from J.P. Morgan. Your question, please. Hi. Good afternoon, guys. Um, 
I know you don't want to um, give, um, you know, quarterly figures for Model S reservations, but could you at least comment, um, you know, did the IPO process itself sort of just, you know, raise sufficient awareness of, of Tesla and the Model S that, that was there any sort of noticeable uptick from the IPO itself? Um, yeah, I mean, I guess the, the, the reason that we aren't giving uh, Model S um, numbers, although I think they can be inferred from, from uh, numbers on our balance sheet, um, it, it's just that we aren't really actively selling the Model S right now. So it would be difficult to take the growth in reservations as some proxy for demand because um, the, the, the sales team is only right now um, selling the, the roadster. Um, you know, we are at right now at over 2,600 reservations for, for the Model S. Um, actually, uh, sorry, it was 2,600 as of in Q2. Yeah, so we're, I think we're maybe over 2,800 now uh, for, for the Model S. Um, but, but again, it, it, it's, I, it, I really caution people against trying to infer too much there when we're not actually actively selling the Model S and it's two years away from production. Um, uh, we'll start. We'll start to um, push advanced orders in the Model S probably, you know, in the second half of next year. Um, at which time we'll be able to have uh, uh, demo units uh, in the stores. Um, so that that's sort of the, the you know sort of timing when you know uh, Model S reservations will start to have some meaning. Okay, and then Elon. Um you know, you, you mentioned the um, you know the alpha version would be done by the, sort of the end of this year, and and sort of eighty five percent of the car would be done by then. What, what, can you just kind of give us a sense of what are the major items on the Model S that need to be accomplished in calendar two thousand and eleven? Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. So, so just to be, I'll add a, a, another layer of precision there. We, you know, we expect to, to, in terms of sourcing decisions, to be probably uh, 98, 98, 98 to 99 percent, essentially, except for a few uh, little stragglers, to be done with sourcing decisions by the end of this year. And then the uh, so, but, but in terms of what gets then incorporated into a, into the um, alpha build, uh, it's, there's always going to be a bit of lag. Um, so we'll have. Yeah, alpha bolts like this one, sort of roughly 85% production intent uh, by the end of this year. Uh, and then the beta build, which uh, would come out next year, would be at the sort of 99% uh, production intent level. Um, so, uh, and, and that sort of difference between 85 and 98, 99 is a whole series of small tweaks and small items. It's not really anything major. Um, uh -huh. Okay, and then um, do, you, do you have a, um, a, a guess or a view right now on whether the Model S will come out as a model year 012 vehicle or a model year 013? Um, well, the approach we're taking is, is a, a little different from the, the standard model year approach. We, we're kind of going with um, version number. So Model S version 1 essentially would, um, is uh, – is the mid twenty is what will be released in mid twenty twelve. Um, just as with the roaster, you know, we've got roaster two point five. Um, and and internally the the nomenclature for development is um, you know more, more that of a high tech Silicon Valley company than uh, typical automotive. That's why we, you know we call it sort of the alpha build, beta build, uh, release candidate um, and production. 